Okay, so you may have noticed about a week ago that Bugatti released the new Chiron. Now, this is very interesting because a lot of people were predicting, and it was actually mentioned originally by Bugatti, that it would be a hybrid hypercar. And unlike the current 918, LaFerrari, McLaren, etc., etc., Regera, which are all going down the hybrid route, they actually decided to go with no hybrid motors at all just an internal combustion engine. And this is actually a really interesting thing because this is going to be the new standard for sort of straight line and top speed cars. Well, at least that's what the Veyron tried to achieve and that's what the Chiron is going to try and achieve. So let's talk about why they actually didn't go for the hybrid setup and instead opted for more of a conventional system. To start with, I'm going to quote Volkswagen. Their official statement says, we will dramatically raise the bar in terms of top speed. We will dramatically increase power. We didn't need a hybrid. If we went with a hybrid, we would have added additional weight. We would have experienced packaging constraints too, because this car, blah, 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 blah. We need to raise the bar on top speed, blah, blah, blah. We didn't need a hybrid. Road holding aerodynamics are better. To quote one of my friends, the literal translation of that is, we did a cost analysis and we found that it was cheaper to put bigger turbos on the thing than to do a hybrid system. But really, I'm going to break it down to a little bit more than that because there's quite a few reasons as to why they did not go hybrid. To start off with, if you've watched my video on power to weight and how that affects acceleration, you know that weight doesn't really affect your um, acceleration as long as you have the power to match. And in fact, a heavier and more powerful car will generally speaking have a higher top speed. So your first inkling would be to go why not add the hybrid system in there, even if it's a bit of added weight? Well, it will decrease your specific power to weight ratio um, because the electric is less efficient. Now with the Bugatti, it's actually already quite a luxurious car. Like we're talking a car here that has diamond tweeters in its speaker system. So they're obviously adding a lot of weight there and that's why the Veyron was so heavy and the Chiron is so heavy. And as a result, they can't really be affording to add too much more weight. As stupid as it sounds, they are still trying to save a lot of weight so that it can still get that astronomical acceleration figure as well as having the really high top speed. So lowering the power to weight ratio with an electric system, not the best idea. The P1 LaFerrari stuff get away with it for a few other reasons I'm going to mention later. Continuing on the weight front, the Bugattis have never been about sort of their top cornering speeds and lap times and that sort of thing. They've always been about straight line and not just that, but also straight line with high reliability. There are plenty of cars out there that are faster in a straight line, whether it be top speed or acceleration. Take a modified GTR, for example. But the thing is, is that the whole point behind the high power Bugatti Veyron was that you could do that all day, every day. And as a result, they had to have large capacity engines, a W16, for example, quad turbos, Lots of weight going into engineering that so that it doesn't break after the fourth or fifth pass. And this means again, more weight, again, less headroom to add in that hybrid system. Now, going back to the reason as to why the Veyron can sort of use not a hybrid system while the other hybrid hypercars need it, a Veyron's torque curve is very, very flat. And the Chiron's torque curve is even flatter. You end up with basically, well, the claim numbers are is that between 2000 and 6000 RPM, the torque curve is dead flat. So uh, you've got idle coming up and something like that. So this is achieved through a um, sequential turbocharging system. So it's two stage turbocharging. So you'll have a different set of turbochargers kicking hard here as you do here. And that way they get that really flat torque curve. Now on the other things like the P1 and stuff like that, their petrol motor will have a torque curve that's a bit more peaky like that. So this bit here, which has bad torque curve, they'll need to fill in with an electric motor. So we fill the torque here with an electric motor and then we can have the motor drop off in the top thing. So sorry, an electric motor will have a torque curve like that. So we can see that the two power units complement each other nicely. So fitting an electric powertrain makes sense. On the Veyron, makes less sense because your torque curve is pretty much dead flat. So you're not doing torque filling. And this means that at the higher speed range of the spectrum that the Veyron will see, higher rev ranges, you'll end up with the electric motors not doing too much and just sort of adding weight to the whole system for no reason. Well, why does something like a Regera get away with this then? Well, the Regera is a much lighter car and it has, again, still a very high power output from its engine itself. It's got about 1200 horsepower from their engine plus another 300 horsepower from the motors. So similar horsepower, but that Regera is rear wheel drive only. It's not all wheel drive, so it doesn't have all those systems. And while the Regera is luxurious, it's not as luxurious as a Chiron. Now you may have noticed at this point that I'm confusing Chiron with Veyron an awful lot. And while that's 
largely my mistake, you can see how it would happen because the Chiron is really an evolution of the Veyron platform. What we're looking at is we're looking at a mid-mount W16 engine, four-wheel drive, luxurious interior. We're really looking at an evolution of the Veyron rather than a completely new ground up design. Yes, they've now got a full carbon monocoque and full carbon rear space frame, but I'd be surprised their suspension geometry is much different. I'd be surprised as much of the drivetrain layout is much different. I'd say it's largely just strengthened components and a bit of weight saving here and there. The thing with that is, is that because it's running off a similar platform, you only have so much space given your platform. And if we look at this image of the entire engine and transaxle setup, we see a few interesting things. To the left here, we can see that this is the rear side of the car. The exhaust outlets from the turbos are clearly coming out the back here, and this is where the exhaust is coming out. Directly below those exhausts, you can see what appears to be a drive shaft output flange. So this is clearly the rear differential. You can see from the exhaust packaging here that there is no room to expand this and put in something like an electric motor system similar to what the Regera has on its rear differential. As we move further forward at the other end of the transaxle, we can see that this isn't a really viable option to put an electric motor either. Likely between the, the flywheel and the transaxle itself would be really hard for them to redesign a whole bunch of stuff to fit an electric motor there. So your next option is to put it on the transaxle forward drive output flange. The problem is there is that that's going to be a very narrow space in between the driver and passenger seat. And so it's going to be an awkward spot to put an electric motor of any sort of usable diameter. So really packaging something on this engine is not possible. So instead you'll have to look at putting it in the front. So we can see that you would struggle to put the electric motors on that rear differential. And at the mid, in the junction between the transaction and the engine, they probably didn't want to have to rework that whole system because they'd have to change the general chassis structure. So they couldn't sandwich the motors in there either. So the only real option for a hybrid system is for them to be right at the front differential. Problem with this is, this will now raise your front bonnet height, cause problems aerodynamically. If you're doing that, it's gonna be a real issue for a vehicle that's designed to have a really high top speed where aerodynamics really matter. In addition to this, the cooling demands of an electrical circuit would mean that you need another set of radiators. This would mean that you need another set of cooling ducts for those radiators. And every cooling duct adds drag. You can say that arguably you could downsize the petrol motor and that would basically achieve the same sort of cooling area. But because it's separate circuits, you'll find that it's much harder to integrate cleanly into a low drag system. Also, a real claim that they had to make with this was that the front boot, if you will, can take a full-size suitcase. If you've got electric motors up there, that gives you a lot less room to play with in terms of fitting that actual kit. Therefore, it wouldn't be a luxury car, therefore isn't going to live up to the Veyron or compete with the Regera. So that's why the Chiron can't have its motors at the front. Well, you can say you put wheel motors or hub motors in. The problem with those is they're quite heavy, a lot of unsprung mass, especially the power levels you need on the Chiron. So again, not feasibly an option. Also, at 400 k's an hour, a hub motor is getting a lot of centripetal force on it and that is a serious problem. While we're talking about the top speed and the electric there, the Chiron can eat its entire fuel tank up. I'm not sure how big it is, but I imagine it's about 120 liters. It can eat that up at top speed in just nine minutes. So how long is an electric setup going to last at that point? The electric setup might get you up to top speed for one run, but what if you want to do multiple pulls? And this goes back to the whole sort of Veyron ethos of having the car that can do top speed pulls all the time. Because you can't go out and repeatedly do these pulls if you've got an electric setup. So again, that's something that they would have considered when electing not to go for a hybrid system because you can't recharge a hybrid system while you're driving at top speed. On a circuit car like a P1 or a 918, makes more sense. Especially on the LaFerrari, which actually can constantly run track laps because of its energy recovery under braking. The last two points are more of a sort of philosophical issue rather than a technical issue. Now, Volkswagen designed the Veyron as their developmental piece, okay? They worked out many things like the DSG gearbox in it that filtered down to their other models. And the Chiron, no doubt, is doing the same thing for them. It's how they can test new engine technology, their twin stage turbocharging. Don't be surprised if stuff like that is filtering down to the lower models but they were always following a philosophy of non-hybrid vehicles. Volkswagen was very late to the hybrid party. It's only about five months ago when that diesel scandal came through that Volkswagen has really started getting on board the hybrid bandwagon because they, was, they were always in favor of high efficiency, small size, 
petrol and diesel engines instead of hybrid drivetrains. So the Chiron obviously took more than five months to develop. This means that they would have been trying to develop it for the technologies that they were looking at in the future. Then when everything completely destroyed itself with that diesel scandal, they had to shift direction. But of course the Chiron can't adapt to that fast enough. And that's another reason why it wouldn't be a hybrid. Finally, engineers are generally smart. Smartness means efficiency in design, which can be viewed by an outsider as laziness. And basically what I'm saying with that is, is that they would have worked out that the Chiron has to achieve two things to succeed the Veyron. It has to be the most luxurious supercar or hypercar or mega car on the market. And it has to be the fastest in a straight line. And they probably worked out that the easiest way and cheapest way to do this was to take the existing Veyron engine platform and then just improve the actual internal combustion engine rather than develop a full hybrid powertrain. And while this may seem like a lazy approach, I'm sure it was no mean feat to redesign all those carbon chassis components and to get the engine power up from originally the Veyron at 1000 up to the Super Sport at 1200, now up to 1500, very substantial leaps in power. Not an easy task, but probably the easier option to achieve those design goals. And so that is why the Chiron is not a hybrid. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do a lot of other videos just like this. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully see you next time.